Have you ever struggled with fillers and what items to use when connecting areas and finishing your island? You have clicked on the right video. Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. When I asked what areas you seem to struggle with the most, quite a few of you mentioned filler areas or small spaces. So I thought let's put together a little video guide that will hopefully help spark inspiration whenever it's needed. We'll go through the different categories and take a look at what items and also item combinations there are and then we'll put those to good use on my island as I show you what my filler decorating process usually looks like. If you're looking for specific small area ideas, I will link a filler video that I did before down below. I won't always show all the different colors available today, so if you find yourself wondering what other colors they come in or where to acquire certain items, I recommend just giving it a quick Google. You can usually find all the information you need pretty easily. And then without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into it. First things first, trees. Obviously, I think they're probably my most used item if they can be referred to as such. But with the different variety and especially the different sizes, they really do need to be the first thing on this list. You can achieve different sizes through stunting your tree, which is basically planting a fruit sapling in one of the surrounding tiles of your tree at whichever stage that you want to keep it at. Little side note here, coconuts won't work, so you'll have to use either apples, oranges, peaches, pears, or cherries for stunting. Trees take four days to fully grow, so there's basically four different growth stages, as well as the sapling and chop version, of course. A tree can be chopped at any of the four growth stages and then does not require the fruit sapling to keep it at that size. Here is an overview of the growth stages for hardwood trees. Fruit trees essentially look the same, the final stage just additionally holds the fruit, and like I mentioned before, there's apple, orange, peach, pear, and cherry trees. During cherry blossom season, hardwood trees turn pink, whereas fruit trees actually stay green. And during maple leaf season, they all start turning yellow or brown, and then finally red. Here is also an overview of the cedar trees in the different growth stages. And also make sure that you don't forget about the bamboo trees, especially the smaller stages I feel like can fit for lots of different aesthetics. And you can of course also use coconut trees as long as you put a tile of sand pathing underneath. This is what the different stages look like here. Apart from hardwood, cedar, bamboo, and coconut, there are also a couple of other items that can kind of be used as trees or in combination with those actual trees. You can for example use the pine tree, or the evergreen ash, or even the round topiary to add some more greenery and foliage to an area. The mush parasol, giant vine, and decay tree could also work depending on your island theme. And some more options for specific areas are the baobab, titan arum, and cactus. Sticking with the planted items, the next category I want to mention is shrubs. There are seven different types of shrubs in the game, most of which have two different color variations when they're in bloom. From left to right, we have camellia, azalea, hydrangea, plumeria, hibiscus, tea olive, and then finally holly. Here's an overview of when each shrub type is in season. The link to this will also be in the description box. I personally find using a mix of different shrubs best because it adds lots of details with the different leaf textures. And whenever I upload a dream address, I try to actually have them all green. Here is how that works. Let's say you want to upload your DA in June. For the Northern Hemisphere, that would mean usually the Hydrangea and Plumeria are in season. So now you would just have to time travel forward to a date when they don't bloom, so October for example, and then time travel backwards to the exact date that you want for your DA. There you go all the shrubs are now green. With trees and shrubs mentioned, let's talk about flowers next. This is a pretty obvious category, I think, as flowers are some of the best fillers out there. Here is an overview of all the different possible flowers that you can use. Flowers can also be planted on the beach, but they won't actually grow further, so in whichever state you plant them, that's what they will stay like. Or you can also manipulate flowers on the mainland specifically for, let's say, your DA upload. Running through them results in still slightly colored buds, or you can also go ahead and pluck them or make use of one of the growth stages. I find that focusing on specific color palettes can make your decorating look a little bit more intentional. You can either try and spread flowers throughout your area without too much repetition, or you might intentionally plant clusters of flower, either of the same type, the same color, or the same type and color. And you can also plant them on little dirt patches or even create small farms with them. Speaking of farms, let's talk about crops. There are six different types of crops in Animal Crossing. Potatoes, wheat, sugarcane, carrots, tomatoes, and pumpkins. Pumpkins even come in four different color variations, white, green, yellow, and orange. Crops take three days to fully grow and you can even achieve different stages 
by adjusting how often you water them. Just planting and not watering at all results in just one singular piece of produce on the crop. Watering them once will increase this to two, and watering them twice or even every day will result in the maximum potential of three. For filler purposes, I usually especially like the white and green pumpkins and the sugar cane as they can just kind of increase the greenery and foliage in an area. Something I also love using for fillers is weeds. Your island has an overall wheat limit of 150, which means that as long as you have less than 150 total weeds, they can freely spawn, grow, and spread, which allows you to achieve different growth stages. As soon as you have 150 or more, they will not continue to grow or spawn, and however you plant them is exactly how they will stay. Depending on the season, weeds can look quite different. Here is what they look like during spring, summer, fall, which is also where they slightly change the color as time goes on, winter, and then finally winter when there's snow on the ground. Apart from regular weeds, you can also use glowing moss for decorations. Contrary to the regular ones, these do not spawn, grow, or spread at all, so each moss has to be placed intentionally. There's quite a few different variations, ranging from tiny clumps of moss to tall pieces of fern. Even custom designs can act as fillers. I like to, for example, add different flower or leaf fillers or some other miscellaneous things underneath certain items for more details, or you could even add custom designs on their own. These can range from anything like leaves and flowers to puddles and rocks, trash, small animals, and much, much more. The possibilities are pretty much unlimited and obviously way too many to mention in this video, so I would just recommend browsing to discover some codes that you like. My favorite place to find custom designs is definitely Pinterest, and many creators also have either story highlights on Instagram or a website with the collection of codes they use on their island. I actually also have one of those. There is an overview of all of my islands and then for each one of those I created a page that lets you easily see the codes that I use. Clicking on the little code picture in the overview will deliver you right to the code and original creator. I will link that website down in the description box below for you. From custom designs, let's make our transition over to dropped items, a category that I actually tend to forget. But there are lots of items that look amazing when you drop them. Any type of produce or natural item works perfectly, such as all the different crops that we just looked at, the different fruit, we've got mushrooms, acorns and pine cones, and also some leaves as well. And as you can probably imagine, picked and dropped flowers can also add a super cute touch. You can also buy turnips and use those for decorations, or just let them rot and use that one. And even tree saplings, flower bags, dropped weeds, or glowing moss can look super cute. Quite a few of the handheld items turn into an adorable little paperback when dropped, and the items that your villagers sometimes lose actually also make great decorations. Just don't tell them. And some other miscellaneous things include the different shells and maybe even trash. I mean, this is Animal Crossing. We're not really gonna ask questions. You could just add these to your path for some added details, drop them on top of items, in between other fillers, and also on top of custom designs. And now let's slowly venture over into item territory and talk about fencing. This game truly offers a ton of options here, from different wood options like the simple wooden, country, and vertical board fence to brick and stone options as well as iron fence options. Also don't forget that we can customize lots of them now to be different colors as well. If you don't have that option currently, try crafting two different fences that have customization options such as the simple wooden and corrugated iron fence for example, and then check your nook stop. There should now be something you can redeem that will unlock this feature for you in the future. Apart from actual fencing, I would also count lock stakes in this category and the steel fence as a more urban option. Option. I like to sprinkle these throughout my decorating either as a single piece of fence or sometimes with just two or three pieces. And now let's finally go into what items you can use. Generally, of course, I would say any and all items can somewhat be used for filler decorations. These like hugely depend on the style and aesthetic of your island, the space that you have available for the filler decorations, and also maybe what types of areas you're connecting. It might have more of a rustic vibe, be filled with basically just nature type items, or be close to a town and could include some more urban items. The following list therefore will probably not be a complete list in any shape or form, but should still hopefully give you a couple of ideas. I grouped them into different categories to keep it somewhat organized. Let's dive in. The very first category is natural items, and we will start with my absolute favorite, Wheat fields. Wheat fields come in three different colors, and I personally always use them in pairs, 
One of the wheat fields is placed on the full tile and the other will be somewhere beside it on a half tile, usually in combination with some custom designs. I'm also a big fan of any type of rock item. The flat, tall, and regular garden rocks, the pond stones, and even some of the fossils end up looking like rocks when placed. If you're looking for some more overgrown versions, you can also use the ruined items, either the different pillars for some taller options or the little stool. And I also really like the glowing moss items for a more magical touch the boulder stool and even balloons there's a few mushroom items as well that work as fillers such as the partition stool lamp and log all of these come in a couple of different colors that either look very natural or have a more magical vibe as well you could also include some pumpkin items similar or in addition to the planted versions from earlier especially the spooky tower lantern and lantern set work well here and if you use the vine bench it kind of looks like there is a little root sticking out of the ground if you want to add some more flower items my favorite are the mum cushion tulip surprise boxes, and garden wagons, as well as pretty much any of the potted plant and flower items, to be honest. For these, I usually try and hide the pot, for example, behind like a shrub or a flower or weed field, and then it just kind of looks like there are different things growing. The different leaf piles can also be great for decoration. There is a green, yellow, brown, and red option, as well as a pink petal version. You can either layer these over your path, or something that I've really enjoyed doing in the past is putting together a four tile code and then placing the leaf pile on top of that. And then one more thing that I want to mention is different standees. There's tree, shrub, and grass standees in different colors. And while I quite honestly don't always like them, sometimes they might just be exactly what you're looking for. Especially the grass standy might help since it's also only half a towel thick. You can also fill an area with some more character and life by including some animals. No, no, I'm not talking about your villagers here. I'm talking about different butterfly and bug models, for example. A tiny ladybug here, a beautiful butterfly there, and maybe even some of the bug models in between flowers can really create some more special moments. Alternatively, you can also place bugs just the way they are. Here, I especially want to mention the cricket, bell cricket, and grasshopper that live in little wooden cages, and the water bugs that come in little blue buckets. And if you catch the snapping turtle when fishing or the seaweed while diving, those can also make for really cute decorations. And then of course there's a few items that also look like animals, such as the decoy duck or toy duck, hashtag toy duck for the win, the caro caro karopi snack that looks like a little frog, the different variations of bunnies, or either the mums plushie or puppy plushie as dogs. If you have ever seen any of my islands, you were probably waiting for this next category, storage items. We are talking about wooden barrels, the different pirate barrels, the Zenmaizuki barrels, and even the oil barrels in different colors. The wooden boxes and bottle crates, such as stacked bottle crates, these also all come in different customizations. And then any of the box items, to be honest. The pile of cardboard boxes, the different stacked boxes, and the rolling and caged cart, for example. You can also use the different seed bags for this, and I would kind of count the different stools into this category as well, just because you can use them so well in combination with other items the wooden stool, lock stool, and leaf stool, as well as the mush lock that we looked at earlier, are probably my favorites here because they look like the most natural and can blend in with like foresty and natural surroundings, but you can obviously use pretty much any stool here. And then from that category, let's blend over into the next one, which I am calling farming and tools. Things I would like to mention here are the wooden bucket and tin bucket, the different pot customizations, and maybe even the vase options, such as the small and porcelain vase. And I also absolutely love using different tools, but also tend to forget about them. This way, for example, you could put a shovel by a little planted crop, a watering can close to some flowers, or add up an axe and some firewood for a little tree chopping moment. If you've never tried customizing the different tools that Nook's Cranny sells, I really suggest giving that a go. I think my absolute favorites are probably the printed design shovels, closely followed by the elephant watering can. Speaking of tools and farming, I also think you can use the hand cart in its different customization, and the water pump, simple well, or the brick well also make for some very cute fillers. And then let's move over into the big miscellaneous group containing pretty much any and everything that I've used on different islands before, depending on the vibe. On my coastal island, I really like using the shell items for fillers. The shell partition, 
lamp, speaker, and stool come in different colors that once again can fit different vibes. If you're looking for some illuminated items, you could for example use the garden lanterns, the tree's bounty lamp, and the candles, or also use the variety of different star items for some more magical vibes as well. Here I would especially mention the nova light and star clock, and of course the dropped star fragments can also be used. Especially when focusing on transitional parts that lead from like one area to the next, you can also include the signpost and angle signpost to indicate where to go. The destination signpost has slightly awkward spacing to be honest, but might also work for this. And if you have a specific custom design to indicate an upcoming area, the plain wooden shop sign might be the perfect thing to use. You could also include different benches to sit and relax, like the lock bench, garden bench, iron garden bench or plastic bench for more urban vibes. And then maybe combine this with some means of transportation, let's say a bike or a cruiser bike, a kick scooter or also a skateboard. Some items I absolutely loved for my city island were the sturdy paper bag, the decorative bottles, trash bags and scattered papers. And I also like to include the clothesline or clothesline pole sometimes. And something else that I personally have been obsessed with in the past gyroids. They of course come in a variety of different shapes and colors and I like to either just sprinkle them throughout or also do little gyroid focused setups sometimes. All right, let's take a deep breath. Those were a lot of items. Like I said, it's not a complete list and it mostly focuses on like main items that can be placed by themselves. Things such as book, different food items, small instruments and much more can obviously always be included in addition. And so with lots of item ideas, let's now go over to to the decorating process for filler areas because it usually follows the same pattern for me. For that, I prepared this little area here and we're going to pretend that I need to get from this side all the way to over here and just need to figure out this like in-between transitional part. My first question would be, do I have all of my landscaping done? In this case, I think this is missing a little bit of water, so I'm just gonna add a small pond to the front right here. Yep, I think something like that is totally fine. And then our next step is going to be to add some pathing, which I'm gonna try not to make too straight since I'll be using a nine tail path and I'll kind of make my way from here in I guess somewhat of a half circle type curve all the way over here. So far, so good. And this is usually where the real fun begins. My very first step in 99% of the cases is figuring out some tree spots, just because not every spot can be a tree. So let's go ahead and do that. It usually ends up looking somewhat like this. This is kind of like evenly spaced out, coordinated, so none of them are like in the same line and so on and so forth. And now before I start filling these with actual trees, I think about if there are any like tree substitutes I would want to use. In my case, I actually would like to use some of the red mushroom parasol. And I also try thinking about if there are any like bigger items I might need to leave some room for, like the brick wall that we talked about, or also maybe a small farm. I think in my case, I might want to have a small little tomato farm right here. Something like that could work for the parasols. Now let's make room for our little farm here. Maybe something like this. And now I will start implementing trees and I'll use a mixture of cedar, hardwood, and bamboo. All right, with everything planted, now I will go and time travel to figure out the tree sizes. And usually trees on the outside will be taller, whereas trees closer to the path will either be smaller or even chopped. Once I figured out a combination of trees that I like, and this process is usually a little bit of trial and error, then my next step is always to figure out wheat fields and fencing. With wheat fields, I like to, for example, hide some cliffs every once in a while so I can see this area back here. This is definitely something I would want to cover. There we go, much better. And then I also think I want to cover this little area here. Okay, also let's maybe add a little bit more right here, somewhat like that. And then why don't we bring some more towards the front here by this tree? And then maybe we could just end with some over here to the right hand side. That looks okay to me. And I will now be using the country fencing in this area. So I'll basically just go around and plop these down and then later on decide if I maybe want to add some more custom designs underneath. That actually already looks pretty good. Now this spot right here was actually supposed to be a mushroom parasol before, but I thought it was a little bit too much. 
So I thought maybe instead we could just put the brick wall here because also, you know, the colors fit quite nicely in this case. Oh yeah, I like that. Now I would like to add a little watering can or maybe like a wooden bucket as well. Ooh, wooden bucket it is. And this is usually where I think of certain items I can use to make an area more interesting. Like that brick wall and wooden bucket, but also maybe some signposts, barrels, or any of the other items that we talked about today. I could probably do much more than this, but I think with our mushrooms and then little tomato farm moment, this might be kind of a good balance. So the next part for me would be shrubs as well as flowers and if you're using it glowing moss the only things that i pay attention to here are that i don't have any symmetrical setups and also don't have any repetitive shrub planting in the same part so this is usually what it'll look like for me sometime in between i usually start with the shrubs then go over to glowing moss and then go over to flowers and you might already be able to see i usually procrastinate the cliffs towards like the very end. I think I'm actually quite happy with this so far, apart from the cliffs. Um, one thing I just thought of was to implement like a little custom design and a drop thing right here. Kind of makes sense with our tomato farm, you know, and I think I will do the same thing over here and also just drop a tomato on top of this. And then maybe I can put a little lamp on top of this right here, just in front of the tree. And then my plan would be to just cover the rest of the open tiles that we see down here in weeds. I kind of like to do that because it prevents flowers from spawning and also just gives it this like nice natural and overgrown vibe which i quite love now that should be every tile covered so now let's time travel and get everything grown and then i will show you again and here we go with just a couple of focus items and lots and lots of trees flowers shrubs and more we pretty much filled this entire area up. Now, of course, not everyone might be doing such a foresty theme, but it usually works pretty much the same. You might just have to work in a bit more of a symmetrical fashion. So once again, as a summary, my process is usually that I take care of the landscaping first to then figure out my pathing. Then I find all the tree spots and spots for tree-like items. I decide on a couple of main items or a main little focus point. I add wheat fields and fencing and then go over to shrubs, flowers, and glowing moss. And last but not least, I add dropped items as well as wheat. And that brings us to a more or less finished filler area. Definitely put any items and areas that you think I might have left out in the comments below and let's help each other figure out how to fill all those tiny spaces on our islands. I hope this video was somewhat inspirational to you and that it brought a couple of items to your mind that you can now use in your decorating. And then I will say thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed for more tips around Animal Crossing and other cozy games. And then I will hopefully see you in my next video. Bye everyone.